Buenos días. Es un gusto abrir esta primera mesa de este seminario. Eh, contamos aquí con la presencia de destacados economistas e investigadores provenientes de China y que nos van a estar informando acerca del de el rol de China como potencia emergente y el debate acerca de la transformación del modelo de desarrollo en China. Eh, a esos efectos vamos a contar con dos presentaciones centrales. La primera eh, va a ser llevada adelante por Sai Fang, director del Instituto de Población y Economía Laboral de la Academia China de Ciencias Sociales. Este es un gran instituto de investigación, un think tank sobre los problemas del desarrollo chino, eh, con mu de mucha influencia en, en, en la política de ese país. Y eh, un reconocido eh, este, investigador este, sobre temas del desarrollo chino. Eh, la segunda presentación la va a llevar adelante el profesor Xiaobo Zhang, eh, distinguido profesor de Economía en la Universidad de Pekín y eh, también investigador en, la, eh, en el Instituto Internacional de Investigaciones sobre la, aliment la Alimentación. Eh, Xiao Xiang es entonces un destacado economista, fue presidente de la Asociación de Economistas de China y eh, también es un eh, muy importante una opinión muy importante acerca de la transformación del modelo chino. Eh, la, la presentación de Sai Fang, con la que vamos a iniciar, este, nos va a hablar sobre la transformación del modelo de desarrollo chino, eh, eh, desde sus aspectos demográficos especialmente. La presentación del profesor Xiaobo Zhang va a ser sobre eh, las, el en los desequilibrios en el desarrollo, en el crecimiento chino. Eh, estas dos presentaciones este, eh, van a llevarnos unos 40 minutos cada una eh, y luego de eso, ya hago, adelanto cuál va a ser toda la mesa, ahora esta va a ser una mesa larga, va, arrancamos ahora y vamos a terminar 12 y media, luego de eso vamos a, a disponer de dos comentarios eh, que están los expositores, los comentaristas aquí a, a mi derecha, este, y esos serán de, de un visitante y un local, el profesor que nos visita es el profesor Renato Bauman de IPEA Brasil, y eh, el segundo comentario va a estar a cargo de Daniel Heyman, más conocido por todos ustedes, del Instituto Interdisciplinario de Economía Política de aquí de la UBA. Bueno, eh, este, yo voy a tratar de moderar esta, esta, esta conversación. Luego de, de ese ciclo vamos a tener un, un, un periodo de, de preguntas del auditorio este, que esperemos no, contribuyan, que sin duda van a contribuir a, a la comprensión de todos sobre este asunto que es este, de importancia vital para el desarrollo de nuestros países. Bueno, eh, sin más, dejo la palabra entonces al profesor Saifán, eh, que nos va a estar informando e ilustrando acerca de la transformación del modelo de desarrollo chino, eh, especialmente desde los dividendos demográficos hacia los dividendos de las reformas. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank the organizer, the Inter-American Development Bank, and uh, uh, the faculty economics of the university uh, to invite me uh, to participate in this wonderful event. Uh, I'm also uh, happy to have the opportunity to share with you some of my research uh, on the economic uh, growth and the transformation of the China's uh, development model. Uh, so I, I, I gave the title to my uh, presentation uh, as a demographic dividend to reform dividend. That is a, a, a 
uh, China's economic growth in the past over 30 years have benefited from a good uh, or advantaged uh, uh, demographics uh, structure, particularly a population age structure. But there has been a turning point uh, from which in the future the growth in China will be differently. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first of all, let's see why the old, the traditional uh, model has uh, prevailed so long. Uh, almost uh, in the past 30 years, the, the old development model uh, dominated. Um, in fact, uh, in, uh, in the mid of 1990s, which was uh, the f uh, ninth five-year plan period, uh, the Chinese leadership uh, called for the transformation of uh, development model uh, already. Uh, at that time, the official expression of the uh, uh, transformation is to transit uh, from uh, 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 extensive uh, uh, development uh, pattern to uh, intensive development pattern. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe the definition was uh, uh, not clear or the, the old model had not yet uh, to die, to, to, to be ready to die. So therefore, uh, in the past decade or, or so, uh, particularly in, during the period of a ninth five-year plan period and uh, a tenth five-year plan period, that is uh, the, the, the last five years of the, uh, the uh, 20, 20th century, uh, there was a little progress in terms of the transformation of uh, development model. Uh, even worse, during the last uh, five-year plan period, that is uh, uh, the 11th five-year plan period uh, between, uh, between uh, 2005 to uh, 2006 to 2010, uh, uh, there was a, a fallback of the old uh, development model. That is, uh, uh, the economic growth uh, depended heavily on the investment instead of uh, domestic consumption. Uh, probably you can see why it was like that because uh, uh, during that period, uh, the Chinese real economy uh, was hit by the uh, uh, global financial crisis. Uh, in coping with the crisis, uh, the central government initiated the so-called four, four trillion Chinese yuan stimulus package. So that uh, 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 gave uh, more uh, priority to government-led and uh, 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 government-led uh, investment in heavy industry, in uh, infrastructure building, and in many uh, uh, industries which are not uh, the comparative advantage of the Chinese economy. So therefore, uh, we have not seen any uh, progress in the transformation of the model. But uh, now I should say uh, that the conditions for the real transformation of the development model uh, are ripe now. Uh, I, in what follows, I will give uh, uh, at least uh, three reason, reasons to see uh, what is the uh, development model meant in China. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, uh, what is uh, the uh, link between development stage and development model? That is, uh, when the Chinese economy enter a new stage of uh, development, uh, the conditions for the transformation 
uh, right. Uh, thirdly, uh, what challenges occur uh, in China's development stages? So that is uh, when we enter new stages, uh, w what challenges we are facing uh, in terms of uh, further growth? Um, officially, and uh, also, I, I mean, uh, if you uh, look at uh, the documents officially publicized, uh, by the government and also the mainstream economist uh, recommendation. Uh, uh, the transformation of development model means uh, probably three things. First of all, from demand supply side of the economic uh, 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 growth, uh, that is uh, a transition from uh, input driven growth to productivity driven growth. Previously, uh, uh, the, the, the economic growth of China was uh, heavily dependent of uh, the capital and the labor input instead of uh, uh, total factor productivity. So that's what we are uh, going to transform uh, uh, to. Uh, from a uh, demand side, you can see uh, that is uh, the transition uh, from uh, uh, depending mainly on export and uh, investment to uh, uh, domestic consumption. That's uh, 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 another uh, angle to see the uh, transformation of uh, the model. And in terms of uh, uh, sectors, uh, in China's case, uh, that transition would be uh, a transition from uh, manufacturing domination to uh, more service sectors. So uh, in, in, in China's case, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, transformation of development model, we mean the three transitions. <clears throat> so what has uh, driven uh, the Chinese economic growth in the past over 30 years? Uh, actually, in our studies, we decomposed uh, the economic growth rate into several different uh, contributions. First of all, you can see the, the blue one, uh, the, the largest share which contributes uh, the e economic growth of 10% for more than 30 years is the capital accumulation.